Hey, 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 happy Monday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Gaming Gang Dispatch is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang Dispatch, brought to you by thegaminggang.com, which I happen to be the founder and editor-in-chief. Tonight is Monday, February 21st, 2022. This is live stream 750. Five, I think, pretty sure, <laughs> pretty sure it's 7.55. Anyway, welcome aboard. If this is your first time joining me, let me point out, super, super casual around here. Certainly uh, not uh, any sort of rocket surgery being performed by any stretch of the imagination. Just hanging out, talking about the latest in tabletop gaming news and then taking a look at a tabletop game. Tonight, I am going to take a first look and page through Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound Steam and Steel from Cubicle 7 Entertainment. This is the latest supplement for the Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound role-playing game. And we will be diving into this in just a bit. So if uh, this is your first time hanging out, let me point out that we start off by talking about the latest in tabletop gaming news and then follow up by taking a peek at a game. So it'll probably be about 30 minutes or so before we jump into uh, Steam and Steel. But if you are watching this after the fact, after this streamed, then about 30 minutes after the stream ends, there will be timestamps. So if you want to skip past the tabletop gaming news, you can just simply click on the timestamps. They are in the show notes. And depending on what device you happen to be watching, it might also be on the timeline of the video itself. So keep that in mind. All right. So should point out if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. It'll not only let you know when the Dispatch streams live, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings, right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. It'll also inform you when I upload other videos, such as tonight's review of... Dungeons and Dragons Original Adventures Reincarnated Volume 2. The Isle of Dread from Goodman Games. This will be up probably around 9 p.m. Central. It is uploaded. It is set to go. I just don't want to, you know, launch it live right on top of the live stream. So I share my thoughts about the second volume in the Dungeons and Dragons Original Adventures reincarnated lineup from Goodman Games. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. In fact, check out reviews from my correspondence all last week, every day, except Saturday, because I had some things come up. There were brand new reviews on thegaminggang.com. So definitely check those out. Because the Gaming Gang isn't just me. As I mentioned, I'm the founder and editor-in-chief. I am not the entire gang. If you watch these videos, if you hang out, 
watch these live or after the fact, you're part of the gang too. How about that? Speaking of being part of the gang, since this is a live stream, that also means that chat is available. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. But I do my best to pay attention to chat. So if you want to say howdy, by all means, feel free. If you got a question, a comment, fire away. I will do my best to respond. Should also point out that you must be a subscriber to the channel for 48 hours before you can take part in chat. Yet another way that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. So, so far in chat, we have uh, Giga Chad Mesh, who is joining us. Two, four, five trioxins in the house, as is Boris J.P. Falconer Honor, who we haven't seen recently. Good to see J.P.F. back. So uh, we've got chat off and running. So let me grab a, grab a quick sip here. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. So I'm kind of like, uh, you know, you know how you get it? Like, it's kind of like a tickle in your nose and you're like, oh, here it comes. Ooh. I don't know. I, don't, I think I've got a little bit of a cold. When I was recording the uh, review for uh, Isle of Dread, my voice didn't seem, my voice seemed a little off. So yeah, I think I've got and uh, a little stuffy too. So I think I had a little bit of a cold starting. So let's see what happens. All right, let's dive on into the news because I got a good mix of news tonight. Arriving next month from Keymaster Games is the two-player card game Caper Europe. And here's the skinny. Your role as criminal mastermind is to recruit a crew of thieves send them to locations across Europe, and provide them with gear. It's your job to utilize your resources efficiently to steal goods. But being a great mastermind is about more than the things you walk away with. It's the thrill of a well-thought-out plan coming together. I love when a plan comes together. Yeah, I know, a little flashback to A-Team there, right? The setup, the sting. Properly deploy your thieves and gear to dominate locations, outmaneuver your opponent's plans, and win the night. You've got six rounds to plan and play your cards. Nothing like a tight timeline to up the stakes. Caper Europe is a two-player card drafting game. You take turns sending thieves to famous locations across Europe, vying for control through special card powers. These thieves have tricks up their sleeves which you can enhance by adding gear to them. And controlling the locations isn't everything because priceless stolen goods await the thief who's clever enough to snatch them first. Your goal is to score the most points by winning locations, collecting stolen goods, and equipping thieves with their preferred gear. The mastermind with the most points tallied at the end of six rounds is the winner. Caper Europe is, once again, for two players. It's for ages 10 and up. Plays in 25 to 35 minutes. It's going to carry an MSRP of $34.99 when it arrives on March 9th. This could be kind of interesting. I believe, I believe there's like a line of games called Caper, or there's going to be a line of games called Caper. I am not familiar with Keymaster Games. I believe they are out of Europe. For some strange reason, I want to say they might be French. Possible. Not positive. But uh, I thought this looked kind of cool. And you know, the artwork looks pretty interesting as well. So nothing like uh, being the puppet master with all the various different thieves. <laughs> it's my own little thieves guild. Moving right along. Arriving from Cosmos in July is a new edition or an English language edition, I'm not positive, of the dungeon crawl game Carrick. Here's the latest. The adventure begins. Choose your hero and travel down into the dungeon. Valuable treasures and countless dangers 
lurk deep beneath the crumbling walls of Carrick Castle. Explore the dark labyrinth. Arm yourself with powerful weapons and spells and defeat dangerous monsters in epic dice battles. But only those who collect the most treasures will become the true master of Carrick. In this exciting dice adventure game, you have six different heroes to choose from. Take on the role of magician, thief, warrior, warlock, swordsman, or oracle, and start your journey. Laying out the dungeon tiles piece by piece makes each game unique. This is a dungeon crawler for kids. Over the course of the game, a new dungeon maze is created, making each and every game unique. Players assume the role of a hero or a heroine and explore the maze by uncovering new tiles, defeating monsters in epic dice battles, and collecting valuable treasures in the process. And it's competitive. Whoever collects the most treasures wins. There's exciting gameplay as no one has to wait long for their next turn and the tables can turn on the players in the lead at any time. Carrick is for two to five players, ages seven and up. Plays around 45 minutes. It's going to carry an MSRP of $39.95 when it arrives in July. Well, well, well. Maybe I'll have an opportunity to check this out at Gen Con. Perhaps. I believe that we should see Thames and Cosmos, or I think it's just Cosmos. They just go by Cosmos, I think, when they're at Gen Con. Because um, I think Thames and Cosmos is more like science stuff, like STEM stuff for, for kids. But uh, whereas Cosmos is obviously a game company. Let's move on into some role-playing game news because currently up for crowdfunding over on Kickstarter is the 100th Adventure 4 Dungeon Crawl Classics. And this one's written by Harley Stroh. It's from Goodman Games. I've got the scoop on. The music of the spheres is chaos. Eons past, the Society of Vision-Haunted Philosopher Kings marched their armies into a mountain fortress at the top of the world. On their backs, they bore a legendary treasure hoard. Coffers spilling over with blazing gems, strong boxes bright with gold, and the jeweled idols of a thousand gods. They were never seen again. Today, those once impervious halls are coated with dust and ice. Memories of the fabled treasure hoard and the heretical theraphages are lost to antiquity. But deep within the heart of the mountain, the flames of chaos sputter and flare. Welcome to Dungeon Crawl Classics number 100. The music of the spheres is chaos. Our most ambitious adventure to date. Over six years in the making, this box set for the Dungeon Crawl Classics RPG features a unique and daunting dungeon map composed of four spinning sub-maps. You have never seen a dungeon map like this one. In addition, the adventure is supported with a spinning alibic key, copious player handouts and puzzles, and all the judges' tools you'll need to challenge the fiercest of reavers and cutthroats. Designed for fifth-level adventurers, although strangely enough, the cover artwork, I believe I could have swore said sixth level. This adventure will span several gaming sessions. But <laughs> better if it's a box set. It takes your player characters from the sordid dives of Punjar to the highest peaks of the known world and into the very heart of creation as they strive against a monster birthed from raw chaos. You won't mistake this dungeon for any other adventure anywhere, ever. The project for this box set is just past the 500% funding mark. You can reserve a copy with PDF for a $60 pledge, or you can grab the PDF alone for a $40 pledge through March 11th. Expected delivery of both digital and physical uh, products. I don't, I was going to say, I don't think there's tons of stretched 
goals with this. But expected delivery is April of next year, regardless if it's digital or physical. Gotta say, $60 pledge with the PDF for the box set, uh, that's the way to go. $40 for the PDF, well, $20 more, might as well just get the physical set. Uh, there was a video for the Kickstarter, but it's just a bunch of talking heads. And there's only like a 20 second video of the spinning maps, <laughs> the little dial map thing, which uh, I will show you once again in just a moment. Uh, the image to give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, but I gotta say, I'm, it's a Harley Stroh adventure. So right there, you got a pretty good idea that this is gonna be a good one. There you go. There's the picture of the, the little spinning discs. Because I guess this is going to be kind of a board. Plus, I was going to say, the video that I, I saw, you could tell it's just a little prototype made of paper. So I, I don't think that would wow anybody. <laughs> like, oh boy, $60 and I get this paper thing. Hmm. Not the case. I believe it's going to be a mounted board with uh, a, like the dials on it. 245 Trioxin says they just backed it on Kickstarter. Sweet, very nice. You have plenty of time to get on board. It runs through March 11th. Another role-playing game Kickstarter that I want to talk about is from Newcomer's Prismatic Wasteland. And uh, this is entering its final days. I believe it's only got six days left, five days left right now. And it is for the system agnostic fantasy role-playing uh, supplement. All, it's adventure and supplement together. It is Barkeep on the Borderlands. It is a zine. And here's what I know about the zine. What if carousing in fantasy taverns were its own adventure? Barkeep on the Borderlands is a system neutral adventure that takes place in and around the pubs and taverns of a distant keep. It also includes new procedures for running pub crawl adventures and simple rules for drinking and inebriation. Barkeep on the Borderlands is a 52-page zine with full-color illustrations on every page and handcrafted by LF OSR, the master of deluxe zines. It's going to include 20 bars with random tables for patrons, encounters, events, drink specials, <laughs> and everything else you need to bring each bar to life. A map of the Keep's Entertainment District, lovingly illustrated by Jim Hall of Brooklyn Games. Simple but effective procedures for running a pub crawl as a point crawl adventure. Rules for drinking and inebriation that are compatible with nearly any tabletop role-playing game derived from the 1974 role-playing game. What could that possibly be? Metamorphosis Alpha? No, that wasn't 1974. Hmm. <laughs> There's also a timeline to keep the adventure dynamic as the player characters celebrate the raves of chaos. There are five intertwined factions vying for control of the keep for the player characters to interact with, including a wizard academy, a cult of chaos, and an NGO run by goblins. All right, okay. Barkeep on the Borderlands is nearing the 1,000% funding mark. You heard me correctly. Just missed it by that much right now, but it's still got like five or six days to go. But it is almost 1,000% funded. You can reserve a copy of the zine, including the PDF and stretch goals, for a $20 pledge or score the PDF alone for a $10 pledge through February 26th. Expected delivery is this December for both digital and physical. This could be kind of fun. I, I, I'm digging these zines. I like, uh, I like, you know, just the portability of them. Granted, you know, not everything is, is you know, spectacular, especially the Mirkberg zine stuff 
the art punk stuff. Yeah. But uh, the OSR stuff has been pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. I, uh, I'm liking this. I, I think this is part of Zine Quest. I think. I'm not positive. Uh, just like, I think it's, it's, I think it's Zine Month. So I believe there are a few OSR zines that are up right now. 245 uh, Trioxin says, speaking of Kickstarters, don't forget, Old School Essentials Kickstarter is starting in two days. Yes, I know. I will have a news piece. Don't worry. When that uh, Kickstarter kicks off. So Boris asks, will there be Fay bars? That I don't know. I can't tell you. I would take a guess, probably. My final news piece, now available in PDF for the Traveler science fiction role-playing game, is the box set Mercenary. Here's the details from Mongoose Publishing. Money will not always get you good soldiers, but good soldiers can always get you money or land or power or whatever you're willing to pay them to fight for. Raise your force. Mercenary presents detailed rules for raising and equipping a mercenary force, training your troops and finding the best, or maybe just the cheapest, hardware on the market. Units are rated according to their capabilities in critical areas, such as direct combat, aerospace defense, or bombardment. Unit traits provide additional capabilities that can tip the balance of a close-fought battle. Enter the marketplace. Some plans do not survive contact with the client, let alone the enemy. Mercenary gives you the tools you need to make sense of a client's conflicting requirements and figure out what is necessary to complete the contract. Sometimes that's the same as winning the fight, but not always. Begin operations. The mission and ticket resolution rules allow large and small scale operations to be quickly resolved. Referees can abstract routine events and shift focus to where the action is hottest. The scalable battle system accounts for force size, tech level, tactics, level of aggression, and a host of other factors. Lay down some fire. The expanded combat rules deal with life or death situations where suppressing an enemy support weapon, getting a shot on target, or achieving an instant knockdown can make all the difference. Inside, you're going to find book one, Mercenaries in the Far Future. Book two, Running a Mercenary Force. And book three, In the Field. There's also the Mercenary Adventure Zero, Trial by Fire, and a Mercenary Unit Roster Card. The box set, the physical box set is still a pre-order from Mongoose Publishing. It carries an MSRP of $79.99. But the PDF is out now. Yes, it is out now. Over at Drive Through RPG for $39.99. Altogether, I think off the top of my head, I think it's about 360 pages total in that PDF because this is a pretty good sized box set. I do believe there's also. A couple more adventures for Mercenary that are available in PDF or will be available in PDF very shortly. I know that this is a box set that a lot of Traveler fans were eagerly anticipating because Mercenary was a popular, uh, speaking of zines, digest size uh, addition to Traveler way, way back when it first came out with Game Designers Workshop and Mark Miller. And uh, I know people have been like, wow, they're, you know, they're, they're pumped about running mercenary companies in Traveler. So there you have it. That is available right now in PDF at Drive-Thru RPG. Speaking of Drive-Thru RPG, don't forget that the gaming gang Thus, Dispatch is affiliated with the One Bookshelf site. So if you are going to visit, say, drive through RPG, by all means, please stop by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banner ads. 
That way, if you happen to make a purchase, I get a little portion of that sale. And all those nickels, dimes, and quarters really do add up and help keep the gaminggang.com around. Also, should mention, if you are going, say, to Dungeon Masters Guild, Storytellers Vault, Wargame Vault, what have you, you can still stop by the gaminggang.com first, click on one of the banner ads when you get to drive through RPG, look to the left, scroll down a little bit, you'll see all the one bookshelf sites. If you click on, say, say you're going to DM's Guild, if you click on that and go, it'll still count the affiliate code. So, because I, I don't have links, I don't have banners for all the websites. So I just do banners normally for drive through RPG. Sometimes I'll do them for uh, Dungeon Masters Guild if something's cooking. All right, that is it for tonight's news. Also should point out, if you like this video, if you like the channel, if you like the gaminggang.com, essentially if you like what we do, you can always swing by paypal.me slash the gaming gang and make a small donation. You can buy me a cup of coffee or some soda. And once again, big thanks to the madman who uh, very recently made a donation to help, uh, help keep us around. Because remember, I don't do Kickstarters. I don't sit there going, hey, hey, it's uh, a new year. Keep me around. Pay me. Pay me to keep me around. Not my style. All right, so a few things I do want to talk about before we jump on into Soulbound, Steam, and Steel. First off, we are, when I looked earlier today, we are three subscribers away from 6,500. So that's sweet. That's pretty cool. Definitely like that. And then I got a notification on Thursday that the channel had achieved 100,000 hours of viewing. Not too shabby, 100,000 hours. I'd already mentioned that we should get our 1 millionth view. I think we're probably looking at the, our current rates, probably looking uh, around April. Sometime in April is probably when we're get going to get the one millionth view on the channel. And as I had pointed out before, it's really the last two years that have seen the biggest growth, at least view and subscriber wise uh, for the gaming gang channel. And the uh, funny thing is a lot of people don't realize the gaming gang.com is where people go. It's like, that website, we have done over a million unique visitors for, gosh, like eight years straight. And the videos, the channel's just, yeah, it's just extra fun. Just toss it in for, uh, yeah, it keeps me out of trouble. Keeps me out of hanging out in bars and things like that. Anyway, so I did want to point out uh, very close to 6,500 subscribers. And we cracked 100,000 hours of viewing. For the channel as well. I thought that was pretty sweet. I thought that was kind of cool. Other thing I wanted to mention, uh, once again, all these people are talking about Wizards of the Coast. So people were complaining about, and I talked about this last week, people were complaining about Hasbro gonna, you know, do NFTs, which they already have. And oh, Wizards of the Coast better not do that. And Wizards of the Coast starts doing NFTs for Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering, then I'm done. Especially, they, a lot of people really complaining about D&D. Because the whole thing is, I, and I mentioned it, was like uh, Magic the Gathering's been like a loot box before there were ever loot boxes. So I don't think most people would be complaining about NFTs. Although myself, personally, I think they're stupid. I think they're ridiculous. I wouldn't spend a nickel. That's just me, though. You know, I don't know. I, I like to have something that has, you know, physical physical value to it, not just digital. But the other thing people are talking about is, I guess, I want to say that 
these people from from a hedge fund i i, I want to say I, i'm not positive but some hasbro investors who i believe are part of a hedge fund are calling for hasbro to spin wizards of the coast off into its own company which of course wizards of the coast was its own company before being acquired by Hasbro. So there's there's uh, a lot of people, you know, some people are like completely for it. Some people are completely against it. And personally, in my opinion, I don't see it happening. And I've said it time and time before, which is the coast brings in a very small portion of Hasbro's profits very, very tiny. Hasbro it does billions and billions of dollars in toys. Toys are their gig. You know, that's, that's where their money is. And Wizards of the Coast does well for them. It, it, it's almost always profitable. Hasn't always been profitable for Hasbro, but it almost always has turned a profit. But I don't think Hasbro would spin it off into its own company and basically give it autonomy to do what it wants because there's still a prestige involved with Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro being the home of Dungeons and Dragons, being the home of Magic the Gathering. A lot of people have heard of Dungeons and Dragons who may not be familiar with some of the, the really big IPs that Hasbro has. But, you know, D&D, there's some prestige being the owners of that. So I don't see it. I don't, I don't see Hasbro spinning that company off onto its, you know, into its own entity. Why would they? That's what I don't, I don't get. And regardless if there's some investors who are calling for it to happen, those voices are certainly in the minority as far as I know. Omenal has popped into chat. Good to see you, Omenal. Talking about G.I. Joe, Transformers. Yeah, isn't uh, My Little Pony, isn't that Hasbro? That's another big IP. So there, there are IPs out there that bring in way more money to Hasbro than Dungeons and Dragons or Magic the Gathering. That's for certain. But once again, like I said, there is a prestige element involved. Say, so, hey, you know, that, that Dungeons and Dragons, that's, you know, that's us. That's Hasbro, everybody. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm thinking. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to be jumping on into... Warhammer, Age of Sigmar, Soulbound, Steam and Steel, right after a short intermission. It's intermission time, folks, so hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right over to our refreshment center for the most extravagant array of refreshment goodies ever assembled under one roof. Enjoy breathtaking, mouth-watering goodies, everything from a snack to a delicious full meal. At our refreshment center, you'll find a large variety of goodies to satisfy your hunger, your thirst, or your sweet tooth. So hurry, hurry, hurry. Visit our refreshment center now. The show starts in 10 minutes. <laughs> yes. Ah, <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I gotta jump the uh, jump the gun on the on the uh, little uh, you know image, <laughs> the slide for uh, Steam and Steel. But remember, we were talking about this is 
couple of weeks ago, the like at the drive-in when they had intermission and then when the hot dog jumps into the bun. Well, that's the video we're starting to check out there. Now, you may have noticed there was a short period where it was dead silence. And that's because if I didn't mute that little, what, 15 seconds? Copyright strike. <laughs> so I muted it out. It doesn't matter. Oh, we just cared about the little, you know, ringmaster going, Arr, come on, the concession stands open, everybody. <laughs> Russell Higgins says, aren't I supposed to pump popcorn smells into the room? Yes. Sarah D is in chat with us as well, as, uh, as is Russell Higgins, who I just was uh, calling out there. So I was talking about the NFTs, and Sarah says, yeah, that's uh, about like the unpaper towels. Paper towels were invented to be disposable towels. Now they're wasteful. So you can spend lots of money to buy reusable cloth paper towels. Paper towels. I know it's just, it's, it's so goofy how, yeah, we won't even go down this, this path. But uh, yeah, some of the stuff that they roll out there like, um, wait a second, don't you mean this, right? Unpaper towels, wouldn't that just be a cloth? Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, and I also pointed out that Hasbro owns Avalon Hill. Yeah, but they don't do much with that. They've got so much stuff that they could, they could even if they licensed it out, I think they would do so so well with, but they don't care. Hasbro doesn't care. It's like, you know, talking about how small D&D &D and Magic the Gathering are compared to the whole overall Hasbro empire, Avalon Hill is like non-existent. It's like a, a moat. It's a speck. So Russell asking, where are the boss peeps? So I assume he... Uh, must mean the madman and uh, flaming heron. I don't know. I have no idea. All right. So, as I mentioned previously, we're going to be taking a look at Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound Steam and Steel from Cubicle 7 Entertainment. It's written by Emmett Byrne, Michael Duxbury, Elaine Lithgow, and Casey Shee. The 124-page hardcover is available now for $34.99. You can grab the PDF over at Drive-Thru RPG for $17.99. So let's swing on over to the other camera because here we've got Steam and Steel. As Mr. Eddie T chimes in, hello, Mr. Eddie T. So this is the latest supplement for Warhammer Age of Sigmar roleplay. I know it's the official long, you know, name. <laughs> so I gotta say, I don't really dive in too much into Soulbound. That is something that Sammy tends to uh, do reviews of. I normally will show off like you know, take a first look, kind of do a bit of a page through, but uh, it is kind of Sammy's forte for the uh, Soulbound role-playing game reviews. So let's take a look at the back. Forge your path with steam and steel. Ether-powered Caradon skyships soar through the clouds. Corsair wolf ships cut through the waves armed with monster-hunting harpoons and hell blaster volley guns erupt from the walls of the free cities. The cogs of war are ever turning, and the mortal realms are in need of talented smiths. Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound, Steam and Steel, is perfect for players looking to create their own equipment, and for GMs who are looking to bring ship-to-ship -ship combat and large-scale vehicular destruction to their game. Not only that, but Steam and Steel explores what crafting means to cultures across the mortal realms. 
For some, it is simply a job. For others, it reflects a lifelong devotion to their deity. All right, and then it talks about uh, what uh, is contained in here. So Russell asks, what's the difference between Age of Sigmar and Warhammer? Okay, so Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, real quickly, is the old world. That's what I focus on. I do reviews of that. Uh, and that is kind of the same lore that's been around for a long, long time. It's kind of, kind of the original setting for Warhammer. Age of Sigmar is a much more like epic and heroic sort of role-playing setting. It is far in the future from the old world, so a lot of things have changed. Uh, I am not the most knowledgeable about Age of Sigmar at all, because like I said, Sammy tends to focus on the reviews for Soulbound, and I just happen to be a big fan of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. We are going to take a look next week at the um, Uber's Like Adventures Volume 2. So keep that in mind. So let's dive on in. Uh, something else, as far as like Warhammer, if you play like Warhammer, uh, Total War, Warhammer 1 or 2 or 3 that just came out, that takes place, that is in the old world setting like the role-playing game. All right, diving on in here. Of course, I'm not going to take a peek at each and every page. Uh, I just want to give you a kind of a feel for uh, what's contained in this book. Now, this supplement has a lot of different things in it. It's not just like aerial combat and airships, although it does bring that to the table. There's a lot of other things involved in this as well. So this is as far as I understand, I believe this is both player and game master facing. So we're not going to be taking a look at like, oh, no, oh, sorry, spoilers or anything like that. As far as I know. So we've got uh, Forges of the Realms, Cogs of Industry, Applied Alchemy, Flames of Grimnir, Breath of Grunjni, and Machines of War. So, Forges of the Realms. So, this is uh, the discussion about crafting. The mechanics for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay and Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound are different as well. They do not share the same mechanics whatsoever. I believe that... The Age of Sigmar Soulbound rules, uh, it's a little rules light. Okay, I don't mean rules light. It's not, it's not as crunchy as Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay can be. All right, just kind of jumping through here. So these are cogs of industry. So this is different equipment looks like these are like different factions and then different equipment yeah so th these are new items so we have the saint's blade seer stone amulets wardroth horn so weapon aspects crafting Alchemists and Assassins. Okay, so that's, uh, this is Applied Alchemy. The Beast Brew. Much can be learned about the mortal realms by viewing it through the eyes of their beasts. To this end, some alchemists concoct elaborate brews that let them transform into various creatures for a period of time. I do believe that the setting of Age of Sigmar is 
uh, at least the role-playing game, is more that uh, chaos is kind of won, and that there are some some bastions holding out against the forces of chaos. So I know one of the main settings for Age of Sigmar Soulbound is a uh, is a city that is under constant assault by not only chaos but the forces of evil as well. The Madman has arrived. Good to see the Motor City Madman popping in, saying uh, they're late to the party. Well, as long as you make it, that's all that matters. Okay, so now we've got Flames of Grimnir. So what are these? Are these like, like magical rites? Uh, or maybe it's uh, some sort of a magical forge. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. And yes, this is uh, this is going to be reviewed by Sammy. So I've got a few uh, Soulbound releases to send along to Sammy to uh, to review. So I will probably be doing that a little later on tonight. So here we've got. Looks like we've got more equipment. So we got Masters of the Skies. So it looks like, see, one of the things that I've noticed with Age of Sigmar Soulbound is aesthetically, it, it looks more along the lines of Warhammer 40K as opposed to, now I'm not saying you got Space Marines and, and stuff like that, but I mean, Something like this. There's there's a lot of mechanicalness to things. Uh, kind of, I don't want to necessarily say steampunk, but a bit more mechanical than we're used to seeing in a fantasy role playing game. But I mean, the setting is fantasy. It's not a science fiction setting, really. So here we have looks like different different equipment, different parts to build the airships. And we get machines of war. Let's see what we got here. So we get our vehicular combat. So I believe this is ground and air. So here we have the Grund. So that's an airship. So we got the layout there. Weather conditions, wind, heavy weapons, the rattling gun, the Hellstorm rocket battery. So a lot of this stuff has carried over from uh, the old world of Warhammer. Because I remember those weapons uh, in just the miniatures game. So here we have the uh, machines of war. So we've got, this looks like we're actually going to get to see some of these. So we've got uh, a breakdown of how to read these stat blocks. So we have a gun hauler. We've got a frigate. An ironclad, which I believe is what we see on the cover of the book. A cog fort. Uh, it's almost like a, it's got like spider legs. Steam tank. Gyrocopters, which uh, I want to say those are made by the dwarves. We've got a war machine, the collegic war machine. Cauldron of blood. A chariot, which <laughs> looks nothing like a chariot down here. The chaos steed, it looks like a big beetle. So it looks like we've got a, quite a few of these. I think that's what we're going to wrap up with. Oh, there we go. So we, now we get some deck plans. Oh, just a couple. And then finish up with the index and some ads for Soulbound, both the bestiary 
and champions of order. All right. So that's a look at Soulbound Steam and Steel for Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound. Once again, as I mentioned, Sammy will have a review of this sometime in the future. The 124, was it 124 pages? Seemed about right. No, actually, well, I guess 126 if we're counting the index. So 128 if we count the ads. Anyway, the hardcover is available for $34.99, I believe. Double check. Yes, $34.99. And the PDF is available over at Drive Through RPG for $17.99. Once again, stay tuned. Sammy will have a review of Steam and Steel in the not too distant future. Sweet. Oops. I was I was moving stuff around in the order because usually, you know, when I'm doing the show, I have all the little scenes set up and they just go go right down in order. And then uh, when I had to switch up that video, because otherwise I'd get a copyright flag for the intermission video, I screwed everything up. So the man man says they've never checked out any of the Warhammer games, but this one does look pretty interesting. I got to say, I am a big fan of the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition from Cubicle 7. And the job that they've done on the director's cut for The Enemy Within, top notch. It's really, really good. Just waiting on the, the latest releases in hardcover for me to show, uh, show you those because the PDFs are out. PDFs for all five volumes and the companions for the Enemy Within Director's Cut are out. They've been out for a while. Uh, there was a change in the printer that Cubicle 7 Entertainment was using, and that had thrown a uh, major wrench into the works for them. Or I guess as we would say, across the pond, a major spanner into the works. So on tomorrow's show, I'm going to let you folks in chat vote to see what you want to see an unboxing of. Because uh, Kirk, the, uh, I, I don't know how new they are, but they are the uh, PR rep for Gamelin Games, got in touch with me, and um, they sent along a bunch of goodies, plus... Tiny Epic Dinosaurs and Tiny Epic Pirates and some goodies for Tiny Epic Pirates. Uh, this is the deluxe edition of Tiny Epic Dinosaurs and also some additional goodies for Tiny Epic Dungeons, which we took a first look at. So I will actually share those when I do the review. So you get to get to choose, you get to vote in chat right now. Tiny Epic Dinosaurs, Tiny Epic Pirates. Dinosaurs, Pirates. Dinosaurs, Pirates. I will give folks a, uh, a moment to uh, chime in in chat. Which of these two would you like to see unboxed on tomorrow's show? The Madman says, Pirates! Russell Higgins says, Dinosaurs, they heard is good. Uh, Omen Al says either one is cool. So, uh-oh, we've got uh, two to one going for the dinosaurs right now. Well, well, well. Mm -hmm. Give everybody another moment or two to uh, jump on in. Oh, now Perkins Dearborn had uh, joined us in chat. I'm not sure if uh, Perkins had snuck in a little earlier and I did not say hello. I apologize for that. All right, so Pirates is up three to two. I also have uh, the, exp the expansion to Pirates as well. Like I said, Tiny Epic Dinosaurs is just the deluxe edition. That was, that was what came. I don't know if there's 
I'm sure there's like game mats. They always did game mats. But uh, I'm not sure what other goodies there are in uh, Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. All right. So it looks like we're doing pirates. So on tomorrow's show, swing on by. We are going to take a first look at Tiny Epic Pirates as well as the expansion to it as well. We'll do, uh, do first looks at both of those. Yes. All right. That is it for this time out. Relatively quick show tonight. I always try to do about an hour. But because I usually sit there and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Sometimes we go an hour 20, hour and a half. We don't ever really go past an hour and a half anymore. So anyway, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. will not only let you know when the Dispatch streams live Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. Also let you know when I upload other videos, such as tomorrow's review of Old School Essentials Advanced Fantasy Players Tome. <laughs> yes. And of course, don't forget later on tonight, my review of D&D Original Adventures Reincarnated Volume 2. The Isle of Dread from Goodman Games goes live. That'll be live probably in about an hour or so, maybe about an hour and a half. Give some people time to, to kind of catch up on the live stream before I unleash that. All right. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. If you were watching live, very, very cool. If you took part in chat, that's a bonus round for everybody there. But of course, I know a lot of people don't have an opportunity to watch live. Doesn't matter how you watch any of the videos on the channel. As once again, if you missed it, on Thursday, we passed a, a 100,000 hours of views. So that was kind of cool. Anyway, doesn't matter how you watch. Live, Memorex, what have you. All that matters to me is you give a, give a peek. And I really, really do appreciate all of you who take time out of your busy lives to watch this goofball. I really, really do. Everybody enjoy the rest of your evening, morning, afternoon, whatever time it is in your neck of the woods. And of course, here's hoping each and every one of you always gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. See you tomorrow. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel by clicking right here. Check out the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch or find out what YouTube recommends you check out from the channel. And of course, once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks for watching.